The following is a Wayne 15 special report honoring Black History Month. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still, like dust, I'll rise. These words written by Presidential Medal of Freedom winner Maya Angelou in her poem, Still I Rise. Its message, the underlying theme of Wayne 15's special Black History presentation tonight. Just like moons and like suns, with the certainty of tides, just like hope springing high. Still, I'll rise. Out of the huts of history's shame, I rise. Up from a past that's rooted in pain, I rise bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave. I. And the dream and the hope of the slave. Join us for the next half hour as Wayne 15 celebrates local African Americans as we rise to inspire future generations. We, we rise. rise. We rise. We rise. Now, in celebration of Black History Month, a Wayne 15 special honoring Black History and still we rise, saluting the accomplishments of African Americans. Now, here's your host, Tara Brantley. Over the last 12 months, as our world was turned upside down by the pandemic, we were also consumed by protests. These images at the ArtLink Gallery in Fort Wayne capturing some of those protests, specifically Black Lives Matter. The man behind these, a Fort Wayne photographer, spoke with me about his motivation to go beyond the camera, to give these images a voice. They're not just photos. These are people's voices that have been trapped in a time capsule to be looked at over a longer period of time. Photographer DJ Eclipse is the architect of that time capsule. His photos from the Black Lives Matter protests in Fort Wayne on exhibit for all to see in the Art Link Gallery downtown. They hang just blocks away from where the BLM protests took place in the spring of 2020. I feel good out here. Let's see everybody out here. I took the pictures just because I, I really felt like a lot of times when protests happen that the narrative sometimes gets twisted. 98% like of the people are there for the right reasons and a lot of those people won't get an opportunity to voice their frustrations or voice you know, their opinions on how they feel about justice and so the best way to capture it was to do photographs. I learned photography working at Sunny Shick. Do you have an actual studio in town? Not yet. Okay. It's one of the goals I'm looking into doing. And DJ's trying to make that happen quickly. He already has a book showcasing his work called Voices, and he's getting national attention in Time Magazine and more. I would shoot, and then I would just dump them into my phone, and then I would post, post them on Instagram. And I woke up one morning uh, with a DM from Time Magazine and said, we want to use your photo. And I thought it was a fluke, and then they emailed me. And I was like, well, maybe this is real. And then they called me and they were like, we really want to use the photo. This is not a joke. What did you feel? Uh, almost blacked out. And so then that one happened. And then New York Magazine happened. And then Adobe happened. And so all of it was organic. This is the photo that's in Time Magazine, the same one that's on his book. It's the cornerstone of his ArtLink exhibit. I was following DJ Eclipse work last summer. ArtLink's executive director, Lynette Scott, reached out to DJ to give his work a prominent place in the city. I came on as the exhibition coordinator, and I recognized really quickly that most of our submissions were coming from white artists, and that they were even predominantly male white artists. And Right away, before the protest started last summer, I said, how do we start taking the steps to change this? And that's why it was so important to me to reach out to DJ Eclipse and say, this is a space for you, and you deserve to be here. Moving itself. Both John Dorch and his granddaughter Jade went to the BLM protest, capturing a few of their own images. They hope to visit DJ's exhibit. It was a fun experience to um, change people's hearts about how they feel about protesting. Because it brought about unity. Instead of being divided, I saw 
you know, coming together a lot closer, I thought. And some of that closeness captured in DJ's photos. And to continue to see their voices being heard and to continue to see their expressions being seen on a bigger scale is, is really what the whole thing was about. DJ's exhibit voices will be here at ArtLink through March 21st. An Ohio native is also in the picture business, motion pictures that is, lights, cameras, action. She's an Academy Award winner whose work behind the scenes helped make the movie Black Panther a blockbuster. I'm a unicorn in the industry. I'm a dark-skinned black woman that does not exist as a production designer anywhere in the world at this level that I work. Make that an award-winning production designer with credits ranging from Black Panther, for which she won the Oscar, to Moonlight, to Beyonce's Lemonade. But what is the job of a production designer on a movie? And I sit down with the director and we talk about like the mood and the look and the colors uh, you know, that we're gonna use to portray whatever psychology. Hannah Beekler started at the bottom of the film business after moving to New Orleans. Attracted by state tax credits, there's a thriving movie and TV production business in Louisiana, and Beekler did whatever job came along, and no task was beneath her. Someone said I needed to clean the bathroom. I built shelves. <laughs> I, I built shelves in there. I clean. I was went out and spent my own money and bought some brooms and things. And they walked in and they're like, "I just asked you to clean the bathroom," <laughs> but I got another job. I got another job. It was that hustle and that perseverance at every turn that continued to elevate Beekler from building sets to painting until one day she decided she'd had enough experience and had learned enough to declare herself a production designer. Nobody else knew that, but I woke up that day and decided and um, I went forward with that in my head. Now I'm a production designer. Beekler also says that the responsibility to have more people of color in production roles rests with the movie business. As hard as the industry worked to keep minorities out, they will have to work as hard to include because it's not charity and oftentimes inclusion is looked at as, well, it's charity. No, I'm, it's inclusion because I, I deserve to be here. But make no mistake, hard work is required to get hired. It's a fine line. You can't be a bother, but you can't be afraid. So you need to find the, the, that sort of where's the pocket of how I get in. Production for Black Panther 2 is underway, which will keep Beekler busy through next year. But one thing is certain if she has any say in the matter. We will continue to see her movie touch for years to come. I feed on the challenge because I am such that if you put it before me and say maybe you can't do it, <laughs> I say maybe I can. In New Orleans, LBJ reporting. Still ahead, business is brewing for a minority-owned company in the Summit City. We'll hop on over to check it out when Honoring Black History and Still We Rise continues. Honoring Black History, sponsored by Star Bank, serving your community with real help when you really need it. Honoring Black History and Still We Rise continues with your host, Tara Brantley. An African-American business owner in Fort Wayne is making his mark with brew and more. Wayne 15's Kai Torque has his story. Juggling two Fort Wayne businesses is no easy feat. We'll introduce you to an African-American entrepreneur doing just that. Paris McFarthing is what you call an eternal optimist. Do you think this is gonna happen? And I said, absolutely. With him, everything just feels possible. So it becomes critically important that I am always operating or working to operate as the best version of myself. Ever since he was a little boy mowing lawns, hoping to get that cool new toy at his local obsession, Phil's Hobby Shop. And that turned into them seeing me enough. They're like, they made a joke like, hey, when you turn 16, you should get a job here. And I'm like, okay, I'll do that. And that sort of passion is how you one day become owner. You quickly learn um, the importance of building skills. It's like where you are today doesn't have to be where you are tomorrow. His family always believed in building dreams, an idea that started taking greater shape when his dad died, just shy of Paris turning 30. And 
it was just a shock. Um, that same year, my mom was diagnosed with um, cancer. And so it was just kind of a double whammy. And she passed about two years later. His next chapter of dreaming, Hop River Brewing Company, would follow. You reach those points where you felt like, what am I doing? Like, how am I contributing? What, what, it, what is my purpose? In 2018, Hop River opened up as one of the coolest breweries in Fort Wayne. Cheers. The magic of teamwork on full display, making Paris a small business owner times two. I enjoy what I do. Like, I enjoy kind of really investing in people, investing in my staff, and just being a support to them. It is humbling to know that I can live my life this way and, and work for myself, but then also to also have people that believe in me enough to do it with me. Yeah. And two people who love building with Paris are his young daughters, who make his eternal optimism shine all the brighter, and he hopes they're taking notes. For my daughters to see that and understand um, that they can do it too. Not so much just that, they, hey, you can do this and make a bunch of money, but know that like there is value in all phases of this and know the strength that they have within and they can use that to create something more, provide for others, for your community, for your family, and, and kind of the, uh, the blessing that that is and the enjoyment that comes from that. Bring flowers by the house. Right there, okay. Here. Reporting in Fort Wayne, Kaitor K, Wayne 15 News. A small minority owned business that operates out of a home garage in Fort Wayne is also staying afloat during this pandemic, especially after getting a major endorsement from a black multimedia icon. Um, I like to think of us as a millennial parenthood brand. Yes. And it started with the original, the remix, and the encore. T-shirts designed by Ashley Green, founder of Cans Designs. So we have the original, which is for mom and dad, or the oldest sibling. And then we have the remix, which is for your first child. Then we have the encore, because you went back and did it again. It came from wanting a mommy and me set with my son. And when I actually brought the idea to Kenny, he was like, um, I'm not sure people are gonna get it, but try it. And now it's on Oprah's favorite things list, so. <laughs> I guess I was wrong, huh? That's my like, uh, I'm right. Yes, what Ashley and Kenny Green started in 2014 is now on Oprah's favorite things list of 2020 in O Magazine. The Greens showed me their interview with CBS Morning anchor Gail King and Adam Glassman, creative director of O Magazine. And during it, they got a big surprise. I love that O Magazine. We were just stunned. <laughs> I was like, give me a moment. I couldn't believe that I did that. <laughs> How did they get on the list? She looks at small brands, her team, like they curate certain things to show her, of course. And they look from the smallest brand to the biggest brand. And so this year they decided to focus on black small businesses. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was awesome, especially during 2020 and COVID-19 and just small businesses suffering in general. The name of the business is an acronym for each member of the Green family, Kenny, Ashley, Aiden, and Noah. When daughter Kensley was born, they added the Mic Drop t-shirt to the original lineup. And then just in case, you, surprise, you know, baby. you have that surprise baby, we have the fresh new beat. So Soon after these got on the scene in Fort Wayne, like many people, I had to get one. This is one of the original styles of the original shirts. As you can see, mine has a lot of wear and tear. Expanding beyond this is one of the reasons cans got on Oprah's list. Oh, I like these. We have t-shirts, but we also have toddler bags, we have mom bags, we have the mom's pops and shorty set. Mm -hmm. For Christmas, joy in Jesus. And then um, one of my favorites that connects to all parents is the I'm going to tell Santa. It's really, really fun. Cans Designs, a Fort Wayne, Indiana, black owned business with customers worldwide. This was a dream to be on Oprah's list. I just believe that it was just like, God definitely had his hand all in this because it's truly been a blessing for our families. Chop, chop, chop. 
Coming up, you could call him a big baller and a shot caller, literally. The Fort Wayne coach who achieved an Indiana first when we come back. Honoring Black History, sponsored by Star Bank, serving your community with real help when you really need it. Now here's more of Wayne 15's Honoring Black History and Still We Rise with your host, Tara Brantley. When it comes to basketball, no state has a hoops history like Indiana. A coach from Fort Wayne just hit a huge milestone and broke a barrier in the process. Sports director Glenn Marini is in our Wayne 15 studio with the story. A Wayne High School graduate, Al Gooden, is now in a class all by himself. On January 12th, Gooden's Lawrence Central team beating Decatur Central, and with that victory, he became the first ever black coach in Indiana hoops history to achieve 500 wins. Like AC Average, it, uh, it, when he was at Northside and Northrop, you know, he opened the door for you know for you know for other black coaches, young men. So hopefully, I'm doing that right now, opening the door for others, black young men to step into the head coaching position somewhere around. Al Gooden is a familiar face to basketball fans in the state of Indiana, especially in the Fort Wayne area. That's what happens when you played at Wayne High School. We're a Hall of Fame player at Ball State and are in your 33rd year as a head coach. You know, that make me feel good. They also make me feel old. You know, see them guys <laughs> play and everything like that. But it was a good time. That's what. The, that's why I think I remember most. The good time. It's the journey. It's the journey getting there to where you get now. That would make a difference. The biggest milestone of his career came on January 12th with his Lawrence Central team beating Decatur Central. Coach Al earning his 500th win, becoming the first black coach in Indiana history to do so. My point was to get my team to play hard. That was my main focus, to get them to play hard. You know, once they play hard and everything like that, stuff like this happened. Yeah, you know, I never thought about it. I never tried to get to the 500, never close to get to the 500. And it's just all the fun I had through the years. He started his coaching career at Heritage in 1988 and after two seasons went on to Harding where he'd spent 21 years as their head coach, capped by a state title in 2001. After Harding closed, he spent three years at New Haven and has now been at Lawrence Central for seven. Even though he's in Indianapolis, Coach Al's footprint still looms large in Fort Wayne where his longtime assistants J.J. Foster and Bruce Stevens are now head coaches of their own programs. Been with Al for 17 or 18 years. First of all, I mean, he's taught me the majority of things that I've, that I've learned as a coach. Um, but you know, the discipline that he that he that he has for just not only himself but for the, the, the players and the coaching staff. Those are the, the things I've learned as much from him about basketball. I also learned a lot from him about life. Coming up through Fort Wayne when I was younger. You had guys like Walter Jordan, you know, Mike Muff, you know, Eugene Parker, Donatelle, all them old guys, they they talk to you, you know, and you listen to them and they tell you what it's like. Hey, okay, to get here, you need to do this, you need to do this and do that, you know. And and we did the same thing with you know, your kids, you know, and all that carry on, carry on. So I started going into other kids like that, hey, you do this and do this. And that's how I got to be a coach, you know, try to lead them in the right way. I think what it means is the fact that it kind of puts us on the map. You know, sometimes they forget about us up, up here, up north. And mostly you always think about the Indianapolis and the Southern team. So it kind of helps people realize that, you know, what's going on here. I'm Wayne TV Sports Director, Glenn Marini. A personal trainer helps bring more diversity to Fort for Fitness when Honoring Black History continues. Honoring Black History, sponsored by Star Bank, serving your community with real help when you really need it. Honoring Black History and Still We Rise continues with Wayne 15's own Tara Brantley. A personal trainer in Fort Wayne is dedicated to helping women take care of themselves. She serves on the board of Fort Wayne's largest fitness initiative. We caught up with her in class. Slow it down or stop. I got certified through the Y and started there. Push back. And then that was for group fitness. And then I just began to have a passion to do more one-on-one, -on -one, be more uh, involved closely with women in their journey. And that's when I got certified as a personal trainer. Up. 
Carla Jennings owns and operates Fit For You in downtown Fort Wayne. She says exercise is something all women need to stay healthy. And at her age, she should know. Stay at the top, toss it up. Eight, seven, six. I am 59 and I don't mind saying it. <laughs> I'll be 60 on July the 30th of this year. And so I feel great. All right, deep breath in. Her work with the YMCA, Three Rivers Yoga Foundation, and her studio led to Fort for Fitness asking her to serve on its board of directors. Fort for Fitness is a nonprofit committed to inspiring healthy living through fitness activities in the Fort Wayne area. Carla is working with the organization to help increase diversity. Our goal is to uh, get more minorities involved. Carla tries to do that by serving as an example. I'm a seasonal runner. I will do it during Port for Fitness when it's cold, but man, that's a, that's a sacrifice. But, it, you know, when it's cold. But once I'm done, I enjoy the fact that I did that, and it's such an amazing event. But I, I do love running. This is Thursday. As a wife, mother of five, and a grandmother, Carla hopes to inspire more women and minorities to take charge of their health. One lunge, lift, and push at a time. Good work. Encourage them first to believe in themselves enough that they want to take care of themselves. So invest in yourself and do what you believe is fit for you. All right, no weights, no ball. And no more time for stories. Our half hour is winding down. But on our website, wayne.com, you will find more stories honoring black history, all dedicated to showing that when we work together, we rise. I'm Tara Brantley. Thanks for joining us. Have a good night.